It's kind of painful actually listening to uh, listening to Hugh Hewitt now uh, after the debate where he got uh, slammed by Trump, body slammed. And uh, I don't say that because I think it was cool or anything, but it was obvious that Hewitt disrespected Trump, and he was still inviting him on the show, still wanted to get him to come back. He would say a fake apology, and it was all a very, uh, I guess you say a platonic, intellectual type of superciliousness. Uh, that was just, it, it got to the point where it was being condescending. You could hear it in his tone. I mean, Hugh, Hugh it prides himself on being an intellectual and being very knowledgeable about almost everything, you know. He does these uh, Friday nights with Larry Arn. He talks very intellectual about all kinds of historical, theological topics, philosophical and uh, wax eloquent. They like to wax, he likes to wax eloquent, but he keeps it light and quick. And you can tell that he's the kind of person that would just, inside, at least he wouldn't say it, he'd try not to show it, but inside, you know, he despises anybody like a Trump. Uh, and so, I mean, there was no way you could get around it, even the way he said it. He said the question he asked Trump, which led to Trump's sneering response. He said, you know, you told me a year ago you were going to release your tax form. And, and this is after uh, he's been on Hewitt's show and Hewitt's trying to pretend he's fond of Trump and respectful of him, and he's not. I mean, he's just not being honest, you know. And at some point, you just got to say, hey. And that's not because I like Trump, either. I'm not saying Trump's so great, great a person. He's not an intellectual, that's for sure. But he's not stupid, and that's the, that's the thing, is that some of these intellectuals look down on people who don't have the sort of uh, scholarly intelligence and think of them as idiots, basically. And that's the problem, you know? And I would say the same thing back to him if I was, if I was, uh, Trump. I mean, because he basically got Hewitt just being very snide, very condescending, very supercilious, but all the while trying to pretend he likes and respects Trump. And he doesn't at all. I mean, there's no, none at all. And and then you go to most of the 878 AM team. And they're all about the same now. And I think most of the people in the legal profession, of course, look down on Trump because a lot of them think uh, presidential qualities require a law degree, of course. You know, they want to keep it in that club. And, and the ir irony is that the, the last really great president didn't have a law degree. He didn't even have a higher education degree. He had a college degree. His name was Ronald Reagan. And so, uh, you got to keep that in mind sometimes. That it's not so much the intellectual, legal, analytical mindset that's so great for the people as much as it is a connection. I mean, that's where you're getting... Even even though Trump has his flaws, he might have the uh, he might have even defrauded some people along the way. But it's not a pattern, you know. It's not a pattern. He might have done some stupid things. Uh, but in general, you don't see that as a pattern. Where he's, if he was, if that had been true, he would have been uh, he would have been taken to court, criminal court, and been in jail by now. Now he's got a few civil cases against him, of course. That's that's normal for business, and I don't like what he did with Trump University or maybe some other few other things, but for that many years in business and a career, uh, and you can't find that many, 
things against him. That's something you got to chalk up on his behalf. But really, uh, I just I just didn't like the way Hewitt was treating him. It was two-faced. That's what it was.